Hello, it is 9.30 p.m. on the 10th of June, 2020, and uh, depending on where you were today, you either had a brutal day or a not-so-bad day, and uh, Long Island was not so bad, and the South Shore was really nice, uh, especially as these uh, these uh, fractal cumulus or scud layer clouds coming from the ocean because the dew points are so high that there's a fog over the ocean that drifts over the land and uh, blocks the sun, so it dropped us into the upper 60s. Uh, but there was some breaks of sun coming through, as you see there. Uh, so uh, let's uh, take a look at the weather uh, right now, uh, over our area right now. So, uh, And then we'll talk about what's going on out west, uh, just to our west here, because there is a line of uh, severe thunderstorms to the west. So dew points are in the mid to upper 60s. It's a bit humid out there, but the temperatures aren't that high. Uh, you see right here, we got upper 60s on the south shore. Uh, and uh, low 70s in the middle of the island, so fairly comfortable everywhere on the island. Uh, the city is still hot, though, holding on to the heat. Uh, well, actually, no, 74 in Central Parks. So that's not so bad. Uh, what about Tom's River? Let's see. They're still, yeah, still holding on to the heat a little bit. I see some mid-70s there, but even they've cooled off, and it looks like there's a breeze that's trying to kick in over there for them as well. However, uh, that wasn't the story earlier, and we're going to talk about those high temperatures, so let's go uh let's take a look at the uh high temperatures for uh, the um area so these are the high temperatures Come on pop up we need a lot more than that what's going on here why are there any high temperatures showing here all right let's see what's going on here i don't know why Maybe if i hit historical Maybe that'll show up. All right. Whatever reason it wouldn't work then. Uh, so uh, here, here the high temperatures were, and they were pretty much in the low 80s in the middle of the island. North Shore was mid 80s, and the South Shore uh, was only in the upper 70s, uh, maybe even mid 70s. You see, 75 there on uh, high was only 75 in Wanto. So, like I said, very uh, cool for them. And as we head further east on the island, you'll see uh, South Shore of Suffolk only low 70s. Uh, and But if you went to the North Shore, you had mid-80s around Center Region, Selden. Uh, and then further out east in the Pine Barrens, it looks like highs were around 80 degrees. And then the Forks, uh, highs, uh, disregard that one. I think that's an erroneous reading there in Northwest Harbor. Uh, highs in the Forks were only in the low 70s. Maybe North Fork is a little warmer in the mid-70s. However, uh, if you head west, uh, you will see that the highs, it gets a lot hotter. Uh, so we'll take a look at New York City. You can see at LaGuardia. The high was 87, uh, but JFK, the high was only 79. Central Park really only got up to 84? Wow, that's interesting. All right, so Central Park only hit 84 today. Uh, but uh, if we go into New Jersey, it gets a lot hotter. 88, Jersey City, uh, and uh, we're going to see 90s in the map as we head out to Jersey here. So... Here we go, 93 at Edison, uh, 93 in Sayreville. Uh, so as you head into Jersey, it gets a lot hotter, of course. And Tom's River we probably got, let's see, uh, Lakehurst, 91. Um, Tom's River got up to 91 as well at Miller Air Park, 93 in Whiting. Uh, so much hotter in Jersey uh, than it was uh, anywhere else, of course. That's not a surprise. Uh, that, that you would see those kind of differentials uh, in the temperatures uh, across the area. Um, we'll also look at this. So I'll make sure I get this. So let's look at Farmingdale here. I'll look at the at this too the other way. Uh, so 80 at Farmingdale. All it, all it was 80. And by later in the afternoon, temperatures dropped into the mid-70s uh, across the island. Um, And it's dropped in Central Park, too, to 74. Now, you contrast that with New Jersey, which looks like they have a heat advisory. Oh, no, it was dropped. I guess there was a heat advisory. Uh, severe thunderstorms, we have to talk about that. So, 75 at Miller Rare Park, uh, and uh, they got up to 90. Uh, but in the late afternoon, they dropped into the low 80s, but still much hotter there than, than here. Not surprising uh, how hot it was there. Actually, was it? I think it got above 90 there, right? 92 it hit in Tom's River, 92. Whew, compared to 82, uh, in, uh, which was typical of Long Island. So uh, so uh, now we got to deal with the severe weather aspect of it. Uh, now, um, if we look at the weather and hazards map and we pan out, 
um, you will see that there is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for parts of there. It looks like there's a severe thunderstorm warning in effect. Actually, Hazleton, um, where, uh, some, where one of our viewers lives, uh, there could be some severe thunderstorms uh, in that area. It looks like there's a severe thunderstorm warning just to the southwest of Hazleton there. Uh, and then uh, if we go further west, there's another line of severe thunderstorms that has um, that is affecting western Pennsylvania and Ohio. And it looks like a maybe is that a tornado warning in there? So uh, this is a, a part of a severe thunderstorm watch uh, that's, that's for that area. So now when we go and we look at the radar, uh, we will take a look and see where these lines of severe thunderstorms are. Uh, we have this one over here which is uh, an isolated thunderstorm over in eastern Pennsylvania. Yeah, there's Hazleton right there. Maybe it'll just miss Hazleton. Let's uh, put this in the loop and we'll see where this is going to go. Let's see, we got to wait for it to load. But while we wait for it to load, I'll go to the SPC. We can also look at this radar. Actually, I can just look at this radar here. Uh, you can sort of see where they, there's the severe thunderstorm warning there. Um, and that's that looks like it could it looks like it is heading for Hazleton indeed so um, my viewer in Hazleton he is probably going to be getting a severe thunderstorm uh, so uh, yeah this definitely there was some purple with it or a while ago but the bigger line is over here uh, this is with the cold front of course and this is pretty impressive this line right here so this is over Ohio and it's moving into western Pennsylvania um, and this is a pretty impressive line of, uh, of thunderstorms as well. Uh, if we look at the lightning, you'll see they've been putting out a lot of lightning. This one here uh, looks like Youngstown is getting pounded right now. Um, and then if we go over here, you will see this is this is the storm that's the south of it. Doesn't look like there's a lot of lightning with it, but there was a warning out for it, so uh, it's something to keep in mind uh, that there may be some other other hazards probably with this storm. Could be strong winds. Uh, I haven't looked at the actual warning. I mean, it's a little outside Long Island area, but it's close enough that uh, we're going to have to watch these storms. Uh, let's go to the SPC right now. That's the Severe Predict Storm Prediction Center. And let's take a look and see what uh, is going on. So we have that enhanced risk uh, that is over Ohio, and then slight risk over Pennsylvania, and then marginal over New parts of New Jersey uh, and uh it doesn't really have us getting affected today, but we've got to look at tomorrow, I think. And that'll be the day two convective outlook. Uh, and this is what we could, could be dealing with thunderstorms in our area. And it looks like the Storm Prediction Center has placed us in a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms for tomorrow. And that is with the cold front that will be moving through. So um, let's go take a look at the models and take a look at what this cold front is going to be doing. Uh, so... We'll uh, first start with the GFS. So uh, this is the this is what's the moisture that's wrapped up from uh, what's left of crystal ball in uh, this low pressure. It's well into Canada, and this is the cold front that uh, is going to be coming through. Uh, so actually, we're going to go to the closer view for our area to get a closer look here in the northeast, and we're going to go to a higher resolution mesoscale model. Uh, I guess we'll first try start with the HRRR. Uh, we have 30 hours of it, which should be enough. So uh, those are the storms there. They will be fine tonight. Uh, and part of tomorrow, it looks like the HRRR actually seems quite underwhelming until we get to around 1, 2 o'clock. And then all of a sudden this line of severe thunderstorms just breaks out over us. It's around 2 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, and you can see this line of strong, possibly severe thunderstorms. Uh, that is uh, going to be forming over us and then moving its way east across Long Island uh, and probably will take, it could take, it's not going to be moving that fast, so probably between 2, I would say between 2 and 5 o'clock at least, or maybe even 2 and 6, depending on where you are, Nassau probably 2, 3 o'clock, and then Suffolk maybe a little later. Um, you can see this line of uh, strong to severe thunderstorms here. Uh, that looks like it actually just develops. It just develops tomorrow afternoon over us. And we're going to have to keep our eye on that. And then you can see it's very hard getting that front offshore. Here we are at midnight, and it's 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 just offshore. 
this front. It's going to take it's very slow moving. So the the same thing will be with these thunderstorms. They're not going to be moving in a hurry. So because of that, we probably could get a good decent amount of rain from these storms. And the HRRR is saying that we may see uh, an inch or more uh, rainfall on Long Island, uh, which is still needed. We're still in kind of that drought situation or semi-drought situation here. Um, so that is what the HRRR shows, and we'll also show you on the HRRR the dew point as well, because this shows you where the front is. And you can see that it's prefrontal. The front doesn't actually move through. So you can see we're going to have a very strong so southerly flow tomorrow, and it's going to be quite humid as well. Uh, and you see that humidity. We're still at midnight. We're still in the humidity. And the problem is, I think when the storms come through, they may kill the wind and make it actually even more uncomfortable. We'll have to see what happens, how steamy it gets out there regarding on what I might have to do tomorrow. Uh, but uh, you'll see here uh, that the, there's much drier air that's just off to our north and west, but it's going to take its sweet time coming, as you see. Um, we'll also look at the temperatures. I don't usually use the um, HRRR temperatures, but uh, it is a higher resolution model, so we'll figure we'll show it to you. And it won't be all that hot because of the cloud cover. Probably only mid-70s at best, maybe a little hotter in Jersey. And you can sort of see where the rain is falling and where the thunderstorms are. The temperatures drop into the low 70s. Uh, and you can see that cooler, drier air just, just off to our northwest, but taking its sweet time. There's another thing here called ML Cape and wind crossovers, which is not usually something I use, but we'll look at this. Because this kind of indicates where the, sto where the severe potential would be. Um, doesn't look all that impressive. You can see the slow moving, the slow movement of this. Um, you can see that slow movement. Let's uh, let's take a look at the wind too. As well, doesn't really show us much. Okay, so uh, let's go to the three kilometer NAM, and we will look at the. This is the zero Z. I don't have enough of that. And let's look at the eighteen Z run of that. Go back to the precipitation here. So, uh, again, here's that line, and it stays, like I said, it stays off to our north. Now, the NAM is a little more, uh, a little less defined with this. It has a couple of cells around uh, 1 o'clock or so, and then just has cells kind of just uh, slowly, not, it doesn't have a line, it just has scattered cells, and then they would move out of here by, like, 5, 6 o'clock. Um, but you could definitely see, uh, and then you can see it kind of just slowly moves offshore. And there's a little more instability off to the northwest on later Friday night. It looks like another tr a trough over here or something that's uh, triggering that. Um, now, let's see how much rainfall the NAM 3-kilometer has for, uh, let's see how much total accumulation it's giving us. gives us a little less, but I think, you know, we'll see a decent amount of rain from these storms. Whether they'll be severe or not, it's kind of hard to tell right now. Um, but I'm thinking that they could be. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, go and look at the sky cover, uh, which will be the next thing th with this front. See if we can get this. This is going to be really irritating. So here you go. Here's Thursday. See we got a lot of clouds. This is the NAM. Uh, and you can see we try to get those clouds, but they just want to hang around Long Island literally just. It, it's going to be very hard to get this front offshore. I think more, maybe more by Saturday, I think. Um, if we go and look at the GFS, we'll see how the GFS is. Of course, it's a lower resolution model um, depends hopefully we can get lucky and get some sun by Friday afternoon Saturday well, well Saturday should be a mostly sunny day maybe some cumulus off to the north and the west and then Sunday we'll be dealing with some more clouds and then that cutoff system uh, that we're gonna have to deal with after that after we deal with this front that is we gotta deal with that after we deal with this front we'll deal with the cutoff system so we'll go back to the precipitation here and um, well, first, we're going to take you to the upper air. So there's a lot to talk about here. So here's that trough coming through tomorrow with the cold front. You can see it kind of just takes its time. It gets kind of hung up over there. And then a piece of it breaks off and cuts off. And this is going to be our problem for Monday, Tuesday, Possibly Wednesday and Thursday before that cutoff flow kind of moves away there. And uh, that, that cutoff, and then after that, we see a ridge building in the east, which could start bringing us heat by next weekend. 
Um, after all, it is it will be officially summer by then. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. And uh, I could look at the euro as well at the upper air, but I'm sure there's an agreement with that, but we'll see. Same thing. Try Splits off. Euro drops it a little further down, so we may have enough ridging on top of it, actually, to hopefully maybe keep us dry. We'll have to see what happens. So we'll go to the GFS now. We'll look at the surface. Eastern United States here. And we will look at how this handles the precipitation as we head into the next. So after tomorrow, the next chance of rain for our area. And it's interesting that it is developing some showers to the north and the west. Probably instability showers uh, for Saturday. Uh, but there's that cutoff. Uh, and you can see it off to the west. It keeps us dry on Sunday. But Monday, you can see it's trying to push the rain off to the south and the west. So we may actually wind up being lucky and staying dry and just dealing with clouds. Uh, which won't be all that bad of a deal. Uh, considering because we don't want to have days and days of rain. Um, that's for sure. Uh, so the next thing we look at, of course, is what's going to be happening with the temperatures. So we'll go and look at that on the GFS here. So here's tomorrow, tomorrow's GFS. You see it won't be all that hot tomorrow with the clouds. It's just going to be humid. Friday we warm up back to close to average. I guess average highs are close to 80 degrees now uh, as we head into Friday. Saturday, around 80 degrees. Probably, hopefully, there'll be a sea breeze those days. So again, South Shore. Uh, and then you can see, kind of see where the rain has set up just to our northwest where the cooler temperatures are. But we'll, we have 70s for us on Sunday. Monday, uh, we're overcast and with that easterly flow, probably struggling to reach 70. Same thing for Tuesday and Wednesday as well. But then Thursday, we start seeing a little more heat, temperatures in the low 80s. Friday, um, really, that's not heat. That's normal. <laughs> that's average temperatures. Friday, average temperatures, temperatures around 80 degrees. Uh, and Saturday, too, but you can see that heat building. And then here we go, Sunday, June 21st, the GFS. Uh, this is uh, 11 days away from here. So, again, it's that 10, 11-day range. The GFS just keeps pushing the heat, but it keeps moving it up. Uh, keeps moving it ahead. It, it always stays about 10 days. This is something we see with the GFS when it comes to changes and patterns. That it advertises it 10 days, but it keeps pushing it off. But eventually... We're probably going to be dealing with this heat, um, and this is June 21st, mid-90s, uh, and look at that, a 100-degree uh, printout over uh, our area from Monday, June 22nd. Uh, if it gets that hot, they will have to open the malls up. Uh, uh, it's going to be mass chaos if it gets that hot, but that's over 10 days away, and I'm not going to get upset about it because it's still over 10 days away. So I know people will remind me in the comments about it, but don't, all right? You're just freaking me out. Uh, if it stays, as long as it, once it's five days away, then we have to be a little more, take it a little more seriously. But if it's always ten, it's always the 10th or 11th forecast, I, I'm not going to freak out over it. I can't. It's not good for me. Um, so let's next look at the dew points. So you see those high dew points for tomorrow. Strong south winds. Um, and then you see that dry air come in. Finally for Friday, we see those dew points drop into the low 50s. And then we have fairly comfortable dew points into Saturday, but you see that humidity trying to come back. Here's Sunday, but you see that east wind setting up there. So that's going to keep us from getting too hot. Uh, dew points maybe a little slightly humid, but not, not all that bad. Dew points around 60. And we wouldn't see those high dew points until we get to that heat wave that the GFS is advertising. Uh, but of course, this is a ways away, and it's always the 10th forecast day. And I know it keeps advertising it, but it keeps pushing it off every time. So something to keep in mind before you all freak out over it. All right. So uh, let's go look at the windy.com site, and we will take a look at see what windy.com does with tomorrow's temperatures. This is the European model now that this uses. So this is the temperatures. 3 p.m. You'd see temperatures only in the low 70s. So it won't be that hot with the clouds and the, and the showers around. It, it won't all be that hot. And it looks like we still have a good strong southerly wind at this time. Let me look at the wind gusts here. So after those showers pass through, oh, it's still going to be windy out. Okay, good. So this, even though it's going to be humid, there'll be wind. So that'll keep, that'll keep. Uh, but of course, this model is slower. It still has the shower chance over us at 8. What about 3? 
a bit get slow with the front. Uh, it has the shout. So we're going to have to see what happens if this lingers or it moves on. It's very hard to say what's going to happen, but it's going to win. The, the, the thunderstorms will win. It's, it's gonna, once it starts, it's going to last for a couple of hours, which is a problem, of course, when you have to sit outside because the government won't let you. And, well, we may just have to break the rules tomorrow. Uh, 1 p.m., you see uh, this is Friday. It starts to clear out. Here we go. So it looks like sunshine over Nassau County uh, for Friday afternoon. How about Saturday? Saturday, mostly sunny, too, as well. So uh, Sunday, we start seeing those clouds roll in. And then we'll be dealing with the clouds. And then Monday, we may have to deal with a couple of showers around. Um, but then what about Tuesday? It already tries to break us out into the sun already. This is the European cloud cover model. And Wednesday, it still has some showers over us. So, of course, this is a ways away. So, uh, but one thing's sure, next week will be cool. Um, here is 3 p.m., only in the 60s on Thursday. Wednesday, very cool, 60s. A little warmer that day, but it'll, it'll be cool. 60s. So you'll see that we're not going to have any heat until, let's see, the, the, the furthest this goes out is Friday. And it does heat it up Friday, but still, that's only around 80 degrees. Has it hotter in Jersey, but as us with the sea breeze. So uh, I'm not going to freak out over the heat yet. Uh, the main thing that we have to watch out for are the thunderstorms tomorrow. I just want to go to Ventu Sky and look at one more parameter before I wrap up this weather update, and that is the Cape map on this. So we'll change the date for tomorrow. This uses the HRRR, so this will show us the Cape, which is important when we're dealing with thunderstorms. Um, let's put this at 11 o'clock. There's the Cape, elevated Cape to our west. Here's 2 o'clock. It's not all that impressive because the front's moving so slow and there's a marine layer. Here's 7. Here is... All right, that's 2 o'clock. That's 5 o'clock, and it's still not over us yet. So why is that not moving? It's literally stuck. So with, with this kind of setup, it doesn't really favor the severe weather over us. Uh, that marine layer. So I'm thinking m the most likelihood maybe would be New Jersey. I think they have a better chance of seeing some strong to severe thunderstorms. Long Island probably not as much. But we'll know when we get there, and I'll keep you posted if we see severe weather in our area. So have a great night, everybody, and thank you for watching.